This is Peggy Peck reporting for MedPage today for the American Heart Association Scientific Sessions in Orlando, Florida. In the world of interventional cardiology, success means fewer heart attacks and fewer strokes, more lives saved. That success is often dependent upon the choice of dual antiplatelet therapy. Currently, the standard is aspirin plus clopidogrel. But today, researchers presented new information about a third generation drug, one that may be better than clopidogrel. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dan Jones. I'm the president of the American Heart Association. So uh, let me introduce our first uh, presenter this morning. The first trial that you'll hear about is the Triton Timmy 38 evaluation of uh, Prasugrel compared with cl uh, clopidogrel in PCI. Uh, Elliot Antman, who's director of the Samuel Levine Cardiac Unit at Brigham and Women's Hospital and professor of medicine at Harvard uh, School of Medicine in Boston, will present this, Dr. Antman. Thank you very much, Dr. Jones. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor and a privilege for me to present the results of this trial on behalf of the Triton Timmy 38 investigators. I'll remind you that the Triton Timmy 38 trial was supported by a research grant uh, to the Brigham and Women's Hospital from Daiichi Sankyo and uh, Eli Lilly and Company. Let me set the stage for this trial so that you understand the goals that we had when we embarked upon this project. We sought to test whether uh, a regimen that is associated with higher degrees of inhibition of platelet aggregation, that is, inhibits the abilities of platelets to clump more effectively uh, than other regimens, would reduce events in patients undergoing percutaneous coronary intervention. We also sought to evaluate the safety of that regimen. Uh, we tested uh, these uh, hypotheses and, and goals uh, by examining uh, one drug versus another. We, we asked an overarching scientific question, which is whether we could come up with a regimen that would produce a higher level of inhibition of platelet aggregation, that is, decrease the ability of platelets to clump together and decrease the ability of a clot to form. And if we could identify such a regimen, would it be associated with a reduction in events in patients who undergo percutaneous coronary intervention and have a stent implanted. And the other question would be, how safe is it to actually use such a regimen? The Triton Timmy 38 trial enrolled patients who had an acute coronary syndrome, unstable angina, non-ST elevation MI, or ST elevation MI, provided they were moderate to high risk, and there was a plan to perform PCI. All patients received aspirin, 13,600 patients were estimated to be required to have at least 90% power to test the primary hypothesis. Stratification was used for the randomization, so patients were stratified based upon whether they were unstable angina and STEMI or STEMI, and in a double-blind fashion received one of the two regimens shown on this slide. Clopidogrel with a loading dose of 300 milligrams or maintenance, followed by a daily maintenance dose of 75 milligrams, or a novel thionopyridine, Prasugrel, a loading dose of 60 milligrams, 10 milligram maintenance dose. I'll come right to the point here. Uh, there was evidence of superiority of the Prasugrel regimen uh, over Clopidogrel. But with the benefit comes a risk. In this case, the risk was bleeding. Hi, I'm Peggy Peck. I'm with MedPage today, and this is a question for Dr. Antman. Um, uh, Dr. Antman, the, the results are very impressive, but when I look at the, um, the editorial that accompanied the, um, the, the paper um, in the New England Journal of Medicine, I'd just like to quote the, this one line from the editorial and have you um, comment on it. In, uh, in Triton Timmy 38, for each death from cardiovascular causes prevented by the use of Prasugrel as compared with Clopidogrel, approximately one additional episode of fatal bleeding was caused by Prasugrel. And, Very important and so question. could you just comment on that because that, that seems to me to be a bit of a stopper. Uh, with Prasugrel, there were 16 more uh, bleeding related deaths with Prasugrel and there was one more uh, death prevented with Prasugrel that was not cardiovascular or bleeding in nature. So the net tally, if you like, is nine fewer total deaths with Prasugrel compared with Clopidogrel. That was not statistically significant. What's important here is that we believe we've isolated out where the majority of the excess bleeding is occurring and most of the fatal bleeding. 
Now, in this particular study, that benefit came at the cost of additional bleeding. Uh, I think we always need to weigh the risk versus the benefit in the things we do in medicine. So the risk, um, and as that you just alluded to, the risk is bleeding. The risk is always bleeding with an antiplatelet agent. So what, what exactly did they see in this trial in terms of bleeding? So again, with plazagril compared to clopidogrel, the hazard ratio for significant bleeds was about 1.32. So it's a 30% increase in bleeding with, uh, with uh, plazagril compared to clopidogrel. Despite that, the overall net clinic, clinical benefit, which is a combination of how much morbidity was induced by the, by the complications of the drug, specifically bleeding in this case, and the overall benefit um, with respect to reducing the primary endpoints, um, it was still in favor of plazagrel. There's, there's always a risk. Um, there's always a risk, and we, we have to recognize that. So the, most, the best studied drug in medicine is aspirin. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't advise that every American adult take it. And I don't take it as a 58-year-old man because its benefit in me is not sufficient to outweigh the risk. Um, and so any time we, we add additional agents um, to the interfere with the clotting process, we are going to incur some incremental risk. Just, just one fo a brief follow. Yes. Um, so going forward and looking at looking down the road in terms of FDA um, approvability of this drug, um, would you suggest that this that this drug these data suggest an approvable drug, but with the possibility of a of a label a warning label on it? Uh, I would feel uncomfortable giving it to individuals with a prior stroke or transient ischemic attack. So uh, the wording that would uh, potentially be used in the label will have to be considered by the regulatory authorities. And I believe that we make a fundamental error if we begin to toy with the evidence in ways that we think is going to help. I think we should use that evidence to base our dosing decisions and our timing of the drug. In this case, they tested a particular dose. I believe that in applying the, using the drug, clinicians should follow that evidence and use that dose. Um, I do think they should pay, we should pay attention to what that evidence tells us in terms of bleeding risk. So, for example, on the basis of the data being presented here, the bleeding risk in patients with cerebrovascular disease appears to balance the benefit. Uh, that, as of this point in time, I would argue as a clinician I won't use it in those patients because the evidence says there's no net clinical benefit. Likewise, I think we, as of right now, we would be cautious in, in its use in elderly patients and in patients under 60 kilograms. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, given the U.S. epidemic of obesity, okay. there aren't too many people <laughs> under 60 kilograms, but we should be cautious mm -hmm. in those patients, knowing that there appeared to be a, a signal in a post-hoc analysis, which is hypothesis generating with respect to incremental bleeding. But in all the other patients in this trial, and by my quick count, that's about 80% of them. That was about 80, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the net clinical benefit was clearly substantial, mm -hmm. and I would say argues for its use. How do you answer that criticism? As with anything in medicine, we have to weigh the benefits and risks. There are significant benefits here with Prasagrel. It does come with a risk of bleeding. We think we've isolated out where the bulk of the excess bleeding seems to be occurring. And if we can modify the maintenance dose in the future, I think we're going to be able to strike a net clinical benefit balance for even more than the 80% of the population as it stands right now, and the 16% who have a neutral net clinical benefit where there's no uh, reason to say that one is better than the other. We should be able to get to a situation where we can take those 16% of patients squarely in favor of Prasugrel if we reduce the maintenance dose. If the drug were approved today, and let me also add that in my opinion, if we could actually approve it with a modified dose, for those individuals who would benefit from a modified dose to minimize their bleeding risk, I would feel comfortable using it in the overwhelming majority of patients. Juan, thank you very much, Doctor. My pleasure.